And what's up guys, welcome back to my channel. Now in today's video, we're gonna learn how to code a stopwatch in C Sharp. Now stopwatch is a super simple concept, you know, just uh, something great to time yourself. You can, you know, record laps or, you know, just reset it, stop it, start it. It's super simple, um, very easy concept and super fun to actually test out your coding skills. So without further ado, let's just hop right into the video. So what you're gonna wanna do is open up Visual Studio 2022 here create a new project. We're going to go ahead and select a Windows Forms app as our um, project template. And then we're going to go ahead and call it Stopwatch. And then click Create. All right, guys, now that we've loaded into our project here, let's just start by setting up the interface and adjusting a couple of properties. So what we're going to do is just make the form a little bit bigger so it's easier to see some stuff. We're going to click on the form as a whole, go down to the bottom right, and we're going to change the name of it. So instead of Form 1, we're going to change it to say Stopwatch. What we're also going to do is instead of the name being Form 1, we're going to say Stopwatch. And honestly, you know what? Make Stopwatch one word instead of putting a space in it, just because it, it looks a little bit better. But now that we've done that, um, let's just change the background color from this white to whatever color you want. I don't really know what color I'm going to do yet, but, you know, let's figure it out. We could do, I don't know, let's just do this light blue or something. So we'll do this as the background. And then let's go ahead and drag a few components that we're going to need onto the screen. So go ahead and find the label. And this is going to be your main label for the entire you know, app. It's going to be in charge of displaying the actual running time as it stands. So go ahead and drag this label onto the screen. We're going to instantly change a few properties. So go ahead and turn auto size um, to false. That way we can expand it as much as we want. And go ahead and make it like the top portion of the screen basically. And then we're going to adjust our text align property from being top left to top um, center here. And instead of saying label one, we're just going to initialize it as 00 colon 00.00. That way, you know, it's um, minutes, seconds, and, you know, uh, milliseconds. Taking it a step further, what we're also going to do is bump the font size up from, you know, size eight. Let's try 72. And that's pretty large, but we kind of want it a little bit bigger than that, considering how big our um, interface is. So let's just do size, I don't know, 90 for our font. OK, now that's pretty good. And why don't we also just bump it down a little bit more in the you know, kind of in the center of the screen, um, not totally centered in the middle, just kind of where it's at right now or wherever you want it. Honestly, you don't have to do exactly what I'm doing. And then let's go ahead and drag a few buttons onto here. So let's just start with one button and then we can go ahead and copy it. Um, two more times because we're going to need three buttons total. We're going to need a start button, a stop button, and a reset button. So let's change the properties of this button to match what we want. So let's just go ahead and change the background color to be white because I think that'd look good against this blue background here. So change the back color to just be a white color. We're going to change the font, change it to like size 10 instead of whatever it is right now. We're going to change the text from button one. This is going to be our start button. So just say start. We're going to change the name of it from button one to be start button. Honestly, that's all we're going to need for now. So go ahead and copy this and paste it. And then let's put it right next to this one. Copy and paste one more time. Put it right over here. And as you notice, we ran out of room. So we will have to adjust the width a little bit here to kind of get things to work. So why don't we just reduce the size of everything a little bit and just kind of even out as best we can. And there you go. Now let's change the middle text or on this middle button here. And instead of the name being button one, we're going to say this is the stop button. Let's go ahead and do that. And instead of saying start, we're going to say stop. And then this last one's going to be our reset button. So we're going to say reset for the text and then reset button for the actual name of the button. And there we go, guys. We have our UI laid out. This is all you're going to need. So now the next step is to open up the backend code and create some methods that we're going to use. So go ahead and click on your button here and just double click. And now automatically not only open the backend file, but it'll also add a start button click method that we can use later. And then we're going to go ahead and do this with the stop button and then with the reset button as well. So now we have functions or methods or whatever you want to call them for all three of our buttons, which is great. And now the only other thing we're missing is we do need a clock or like a timer on the form of the page that we can use in the back end to actually make this whole thing work. So go ahead in your toolbox and scroll down to where you see timer and just drag it onto the screen. And you'll notice it'll create this little thing down here to the left. So instead of timer one, we're going to just create or name it form timer. 
And instead of the interval being 100, we're going to put it in 10 milliseconds. So you might ask yourself why it's necessary for our timer to have an interval of 10 seconds. Well, that's because we're going all the way down to milliseconds here with this timer, you know, the dot zero zero, and that needs to be extremely accurate and update very frequently. So we need that to, for this whole thing to work. So now that you have your timer on the screen, go ahead and just double click it. And now create a form timer tick function back here. And what this does is every single time that the timer ticks, which is based on the interval we set, so every 10 milliseconds, this function will fire, and we can use this to update the form and, you know, put stuff where it needs to be so that the whole thing works. All right, guys, now that we have our backend code open, let's go ahead and make it work. So right above stopwatch here at the top, we're just going to initialize a private variable. So let's say private, and then we're going to say date time, and we're going to call it start time. And the start time variable is going to store a daytime value, and it's just going to get the time that is right now. So like, you know, for example, 1218 and whatever milliseconds is right now. So when I run this, the start time will be initialized as that. And then we're gonna use it to calculate how long it's been since then. So let's go ahead and start with the easiest function of all. How are we going to start our timer? Well, it's two simple lines of code. So first we're going to say set a value to start time. And what I mean by that is our start time variable we just created is going to be equal to datetime.now. Like I said earlier, so we, we click start, it's going to say, hey, what time is it? Datetime.now is that time, put it, you know, as the start time. And then the next thing we're going to do is go ahead and start the timer. So we're going to say form timer dot start. That way it'll actually start the timer running and then that will create or that will make this timer tick method um, fire every 10 milliseconds. All right guys let's move on to the stop button click method and this is probably the easiest one of all. It's literally just form timer dot stop because it's just going to stop what we're currently doing. It's not resetting anything. It's simply pausing it and we could start it again if we want. So that is literally all you need for the stop button method. All right, guys, moving on to the reset button. So this is just going to be, you know, if it's it has whatever time on it, we just want to kind of start over, right? So not only do we need to reset the label that shows how much time has passed, but we also need to just stop the timer from running. That way, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't just keep running infinitely. So first we're going to go ahead and stop it. So form timer dot stop is what we're going to do. And then we're going to go ahead and set the watch, or sorry, the, the label on our form, which actually, now that I think of it, I don't think we've ever named this. So go ahead and click your label and scroll down to where it says name. And you'll notice it still says label one. So let's just change this to say um, watch label. And then in the back end here, once we're resetting and we've stopped the timer, we're going to just say, hey, the watch label dot text, let's set it back to what it was originally. So 00 colon 00 dot 00. And that's just going to be a nice way to reset all of our stuff. All right, guys, we have one more function to do here, and then we are basically done. We know how to start the timer. We know how to stop it. We know how to reset things. But how do we actually make this work? We know we have the starting time set to, um, you know, daytime.now. So whatever time it is when the, the user clicked start. But how do we calculate how long it's been since then, um, since, the, you know, right now, uh, and then display that on the screen? So what we're gonna do is first use something called a time span. So let's add a comment. We're gonna to calculate how long it's been since start. And what we're gonna do is time span, and then we're just gonna call it span. And that's going to be equal to what it is right now minus the start time. The reason is, is because, okay, start time was whenever they clicked go, and that could have been 10 seconds ago. So hey, it's been 10 seconds minus, you know, how long ago was that, and that's, you know, how long it's been since we clicked start. So we're kind of doing like the some quick subtraction and then just displaying it on the label. All right, guys, and now it's time to actually display that time span value we just calculated onto our label. So we're gonna say watch label dot text is equal to our time span. But the problem is it's a time span object and it's not a string object. So let's go ahead and say that we're going to convert it to a string. But that's not all. We also need to say, you know, what kind of formatting do we want um, to display on this label? So you could say at and then do two double quotes. And we want to show um, how many minutes, which is denoted by double lowercase m. Then we need a backslash and a 
quote, or sorry, not a quote, a colon. Um, you have to escape it with this backslash here. And then we need seconds, which is uh, two lowercase s's. And then we need a backslash and a period. That way that's escaped as well. And then we just need to say um, FF, which is the milliseconds that have passed. All right, guys, that's literally all we need for our um, functions here. So let's go ahead and run it and make sure that it works. So we go ahead and click start. If I click the start button here, we should go ahead and have a running timer. So that's awesome. So we have it running. And if I click stop, it should accurately pause it. And it does. You notice it pauses it right when we clicked it. And if I click reset, it should set it back to zero. And you notice it does. And if we click start again, here we are. We're back on a new track. Now, here's a little fun challenge that I left with you on this video. See if you can figure out on your own how to, once you've started the timer and you click stop, if I click start again, notice how it goes back to zero. See if you can figure out on your own how to keep that time and then just pick up where you left off rather than starting back over to zero. So go ahead and leave that down in the comments below and I will be happy to get back to you on it. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and subscribe to my channel for more content like this or give it a thumbs up or comment down below any thoughts or suggestions for the next video. And with that being said, thank you guys for watching once again and I'll see you in the next one.